Hello everyone, Nadlap here. Today we're going to be generating these random terrains in the Godot game engine version 3.2.3 stable and let's get right into it. I'm going to make sure that the way I explain this will be applicable to any sort of game or any game project you want to make. Let's get right into coding this. So I want to start off by saying you need to have some assets. Usually I make my tutorials in mind for people who don't have assets and who just have the Godot sprite or default icon but you actually need some assets if you want this to look nice or at least look like uh, a sort of map. So, you, so for this basic setup, I just have a, a snow cap mountain type color, a, a grassy color, a rocky color, and a water color. And I have another project where I would I went with nine or I think eight or nine sprites, and you can see the result of that uh, later on in the video. But essentially, what you want to do is you want to take these sprites and you want to make them into tiles. And you can see that I can draw with these tiles. I can literally do whatever I want, but I don't want to do that. I want the program I want Godot to do that for me. We're going to start off by attaching a game scene, a script to our game scene or tile map. You can do which whenever, whichever one you want. Uh, I just chose game scene because this is the only thing I'm doing on this project. If you're making a bigger project you might want to attach it to the tile map. So what are we going to do or according to first principles what's the best thing to do? Well we want to get declaration to a couple key variables. Oh and I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, you want to make sure that these sprites are really small like 8 by 8 I don't know where there's a shadow there but 8 by 8 right these are all 8 by 8 sprites you can see. And essentially, the reason you want to make it small is because you want the tile map to place these in a way where it looks like terrain. Of course, you can make them bigger. Of course, like uh, there's no limit on what size you can do. But I just chose 8x8 because it helps you make something that fits in with the default uh, Godot frame size. And you can see we just want to make reference to this uh, corner here. So it says 127 by 74. That's the um, that's a really important number because that's actually the width and height. Uh, 127 is the width. Height is uh, 74. So. Uh, to code this, we want to get some declarations to importing variables. So we could say stuff like our width, which we just said was 127. Let's make it 128 so we don't miss a couple blocks. And I believe it said 74. Yeah, 74 is so 75. I'm gonna, and I'm going to explain why we have to type in a number a little bit more than one over here. We also want to make sure we get reference to our sprite. No, we don't need to get reference to our sprite. There is no sprite. Um, we have to get reference to a tile map, which is the tile map over here. And of course, if the script is on the tile map itself, you don't need this whatsoever. And then this is the key. The key player here is open simplex noise dot new. We want to make a variable about this. Uh, you can also make OSN. I just chose open simplex noise. So um, for those of you watching, if you ever forget what OSN stands for, I'm just making sure that I keep the variable name as clear as possible. Then in the ready function, we want to uh, do a couple things. We just want to say randomize is. Uh, we just want to randomize the random numbers Godot uses. We want to say open simplex noise dot seed, which is actually a property in. Is actually a property inside of this uh, open simplex noise class. Seed is just the value this uh, object uses to help generate its map. It's kind of like the seed in Minecraft. It it specifies each map. So in case you ever have some players from, um, if you ever have like an online forum for your game, and someone says, "Oh, what? Um, this is a seed I found." Stuff like that. That's essentially what the seed is for. I can even show how to make the seed specific each time. Um, we also want to set the octaves equal to five. I just found that's the best one. Of course, that requires experimentation. And I'm going to link another project here and show it, uh, show what these octaves and a bunch of stuff does. But I'm just going to get, uh, I just want to get the viewer to a point where they can make this themselves. And then we're going to make a generate map function. And essentially, what we're going to say in the generate map function is actually, I'm going to take this out because it's kind of scary looking. We just, we just want to say something very simple. We want to say, we want to generate a map and we want to say 4x in width, 4y in height. And what does that mean? Essentially what 4x in width and 4y in height means is that we're going to go down like this for downwards and then when we hit the bottom we're going to go back up to the top oops we're going to go back up to the top and do the same thing but of course we're going to be passing in different tiles and if you're still confused about why this these lines of code work it's it's essentially saying in fact we can just print out x and y you can see what happens um why do I have to sit here and explain it when you can literally see that Godot will say nothing because we never called the function uh, generate map and you can see Godot will literally print out printing takes some time and you can see that uh, every time uh, x uh, increases our y increases by the entire amount of width and you can see if I scroll down you can see it stops at 74 so, and this is exactly where why we need to add plus one it's because 4x in width stops one short because it says 4x in let's say 10 it goes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then it says it says 10 is not inside of 10 so we're not going to use it and we're just going to be using 1 to 9 or 0 to 9 actually so it still prints out 10 digits or in this case it will still print out 75 digits because it starts at 0 if that makes sense 
And that's essentially what we're going to be doing. But we don't want to print out X and Y because that doesn't show us anything. We want to set our tiles to something. And you can see with, if I replace it with two lines of code, we get entirely blue. We get something entirely blue. If I replace it with two, and I'll explain where these numbers are coming from, we get something else. These numbers essentially refer to these tiles over here. And you can see at the end, at the end of them, it tells you what that is. When I typed in zero, I got blue. When I typed in two, I got brown. If I typed in one, I would get green. And you can see, because a rand over here is exactly what's over here, um, it means the same thing. We get entirely, we get something entirely green. But we don't want to say we want to get something entirely green. We want to get random different noise patterns. So how do we get random different noise patterns? Well, we get them through the open simplex noise. Get it through this open simplex noise object, which we created an instance of by saying dot new. We're basically going to say something a little bit scary. So I'm going to trim it down a bit. Um, so essentially, what we're going to be saying is we're going to be getting open simplex noise dot get noise two D. And we're going to pass in an X and Y. What's get noise 2D? It's a function within open noise 2D itself, which basically says when you pass in an X and Y into this function, we're going to give you a random negative one and one value. Well, hmm, that's interesting. A random negative, a value from a random value from negative one to one. And of course, uh, when I mean random, it means like there's like a pattern to the randomness. Like there's a, some sort of like terrain generation type of randomness. It's not random like one, zero, one, five, four. Do you know what I mean? So, of course, it doesn't go up to four and five, but we can change that. So now we're going to say, take the absolute value because we don't want to get negative ones. We don't have any tiles over here that have the negative one. Remember, we only go from zero to three. And with that being said, if we're going from zero to three, we want to multiply this by, well, we actually want to multiply it by three because it returns a value from negative one to one. So let's say it returns one. We get the, let's say it returns negative one. We get the absolute, which means we get positive one because we just take away the negative sign. And then we're going to multiply it by three. So we can also get snow cap mountains. But then we also want to floor it because it returns a value from negative one to one. It can include 0 0.5, 0 0.005, whatever. We want to floor it so we get a proper whole number integer, which is exactly what is used by these tiles over here. These are not 3.5, 1.2. It's a specific whole number, an integer. So after that, we just run the scene and you can see we get random maps. Now, I don't want to keep closing and opening the scene just because that's a really te tedious process. So we can just add in this uh, line of code here, which says if event is action press, which is UI end, which is the end button, like you can see, it's, it's the button that lets me na navigate these text lines. And we're just going to say well, at the get tree dot reload current scene, we're just going to re refresh the scene. And that's essentially it. So we get you can see that we get these uh, mountains and stuff, or we get these land masses, but you can see that we're not getting our mountains and stuff. Well, why not? Because we actually have to increase this number a bit. Uh, I just found five works the best. And remember, if you go over a certain limit, you're going to start getting gray splotches everywhere. Why? Um, it's not because these are mountains or something I put in. It's because uh, there's no number greater than four over here. So when it, when you tell Godot, hey, can you please put in tile number four? It goes, I don't have that. So I'm just going to put in a default tile or a clear tile, which is just the background. And you can see that if I made the background, and if you don't believe me, uh, if I made the default clear color to red or something, you're going to see red rooftops or whatever. Uh, it's just the background default clear color that your project has. Now, I did glaze over a couple facts, which I'm going to go over now. In the open simplex noise object, class, whatever you want to call it, there are these values you have to be aware of, which is octaves, period, persistence, uh, and um, lacrinarity. Let's just call it lacrinarity. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it, but these influence how your map is generated. Now, I like, I'm not sure about you, but these mean very little to me. Even if I read the description, it just says that we, we use um, the value you provided to uh, generate something or a lower frequency or whatever. That means nothing to me. So I'm going to be right back. So I actually made a second project entirely, which actually helps you helps demonstrate these uh, ideas. So you can see period will just mess up, not mess up your project, but it kind of zooms in and out your project if you want to think about it like that. And that's what you'd use it for. Uh, remember, um, period is the top slider. Octave is this top slider. Persistence is this slider. Lacrinarity is this slider. So we can go to octave next. And you can see octave kind of defines how sharp it is. And of course, I'm going to leave this project in on JHub. You can play around with it yourself. Octave kind of defines how um, strong the shapes are. I guess you could say like these are really strong, like well-defined, clear edge rough shapes. Well, these are more fluid and like circular. Uh, we can see persistence over here. It basically, it looks like a mess, but if you think about it, it, it defines how uh, how much a value nearby affects a value. Uh, I, I want to kind of think of persistence like how much a value uh, nearby affects a value that's going to be generated. 
For example, you can see over here, let's just say take, take this blotch of land. So around this dark blue, we have light blue. And then around light blue, we should only have yellow. Around yellow, we should have green. And around green, we should have brown. But we can't have brown next to blue because, uh, blue because that doesn't make a lot of sense. And of course, there are cases where this happens. And I think I just saw it somewhere. I'm not 100% sure. But it does happen. But think of persistence kind of like how um, how how much of a value influences a value next to it, kind of. And lacrinarity, you can see, uh, defines like um, the smoothness of the shape, kind of. And of course, uh, these are just my um, thoughts about it. Uh, you have to go around play with this and try it out yourself and you can obviously come up with much better ideas uh, about what these values really mean i know sebastian leg i'm pretty sure i'm pronouncing i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that right but he has a very good videos detailing this as well and this is also the project where i use a bunch of other colors you can see that um, these assets were actually smaller i went by a four by four square and i had a bunch of colors so i could see a bunch of other terrains and you can see white never came up it never came up once actually but we're using the exact same function and i'm using multiplying it by 12 Let's say I multiply by 15. Of course, I'm going to get much more, a lot crazier terrain. You can, now you can see there's some white. Um, yeah, and it just looks like a map, kind of, if that's what you're going for. And yeah, these, this is just the code. I'm, of course, I'm going to leave everything on GitHub. I said I was going to show how to get a seed. So you can just do export var. So we can just say a ver uh, we can just make a variable called in seed and we set it equal to a string. And then we're going to say if in seed is true, which means if there is something there, then we're going to set a uh, OSN, and that's why I use open simplex noise as an example of something else you can use to hash, not has, hash um, in seed. So it actually creates a value from the string we pass in. So I'll actually show what that means. So print uh, hash in seed because we want to see it, right? And else, if there's no seed input in, then we're just going to go with our random integer. So you can see when I go over here to the game scene, you can pass in a seed. Of course, I'm going to pass in NAD labs, and you can see. This is the map Nad Labs generates, and that's the hash hash code. And uh, sorry, it went blue because you put the period uh, because the period is zero. It doesn't make sense for the period to be zero, so it just like blanks out and says I'm not doing anything. So this is the hash of Nad Labs uh, in this uh, Godot instance I'm running in this Godot game engine I'm running. And when I run it again, you can see I get the exact same stuff. Um, let's actually take like a uh, remember like this uh, area was over here again. These white these uh. Uh, snow peak mountains over here and there's like one over here I can show you when I run it again I get the exact same thing let me just increase the thing uh, let me just increase the period and you can see I get the white snow cap mountains again and if I type in nad labs with an s I get something completely different um, yeah you can see that there there was like a white snow cap mountain over here but it's totally different so yeah that's essentially what I want to show something you can implement in your own games and I'm gonna leave both projects on jhub down below I might leave the open no, uh, open simplex noise slider on itch.io, maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, depends when I'm editing this, uh, whatever. But that's all I have to say for this tutorial. Have an amazing day.